like any of your drug experiences helped with career anxiety? Did you ever have career anxiety? Oh, when you were, yeah, 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 yeah. When you were first starting, did you ever feel like? Yeah, there was no path. There's now it's such a path to success. There was no path to success back then. There was a couple comics who were making money. Did like you feel couple. scared when you first started to like, okay, I'm not going to be on the night show because I'm not clean. Well, I wasn't do I have anything to, yet. Do I, was, I have to be clean? A month or week or two, I mean, even maybe a year, I was like trying to be a comic. My friend says this. Everyone starting comedy is doing an impression of a comedian. Yeah. They're like, so I was doing like Lewinsky jokes and like the stuff I'd see on the Tonight Show. Was there a specific person you were trying to be or you're just emulating? Just like, this is what a comic is supposed to be. And then you find your own voice, they call it, you know? But, yeah. But then once I was like kind of filthy, it was like, oh yeah, that's, uh, I can't do that. Or I, mean, I guess I was for a while, like, I guess I could be clean just for that, but they never called, you know? Um, you just do your own thing. And then they called. Mm. Once you do your own thing, they call. But were you okay just being, like, if it didn't pan out? Well, in the beginning, it wasn't even like that. It really was Buddhism in the, in the present, where it was like, we're just having fun. I learned how to do a callback today. I finally mm. did one. There was no, like, what are you going to do with this? Like, oh, I have probably nothing. I haven't thought of that. You know, it's like, it's. I imagine going to, like, a little league. Or, like, you think you play this professionally? And you're like, oh, uh, we're just fucking around, man. more slices than my friends. Yeah, we're just having a good time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah, that's what a weird thing to, like. Even in college, you played in college. Most of them aren't like, I'm not gonna play pro. I'm not even thinking about it. Damn, I'm trying to party and like yeah. fuck around. Yeah, I'm just on the golf team in, in my high school. I don't know what pro. I don't know. And how long did that sensation last? Where you're just like, I don't know. But that was the fun. best time. Ralphie told me that once. May he was like, I met him and he was like, How long are you doing comedy? I think a year, maybe two years. I forget. He goes, Ah, oh, this one is just fun. And I was like, What an idiot! I'm starving. I can't afford <laughs> food. Yeah. But man, he was right. It's just there's no. No one's competitive yet. There was nothing to get or not get. No bitterness. I mean, no one had yet started fucking other people's girlfriends. Um, it was just so fun and friendly. I remember me and Duncan out in Hollywood, and we were just like, with this other guy, I forget this other guy, and he was doing this like dance, like, Hollywood, we're just having fun. We're just broke and having a blast, trying to figure shit out. Ah, God, it was great. So. The idea that like, what can you do with this? It wasn't even crossing our minds. We were just really having fun telling us like, there's no open mic at a, at a coffee shop up in you know Topanga. Like, oh really? Okay. There's a, there's a 12 o'clock mic in the valley. Like, oh sweet, I can do that, and then come back and do my night mic. It, yeah, what a blast it was. Yeah, that seems like the most fun time. God. And I feel like a lot of those. Some of them went on to become like real comics. What did like who? Duncan. Yeah. I met Segura like a little bit later, but but not not really. Brent is easy. Like these guys do TV shows and like and like headline theaters. Like, but we were just like doing coffee shops and trying. I, like we talked about earlier, it was like I don't remember all the guys who fell. I don't remember that. I don't remember who that third guy was with us. I remember there was a third guy with us, mm -hmm. but he stopped. So that was twenty something years ago. But it's just such an interesting like path and time. I don't know. I don't know if you reflect on it. I look at you in that sense where I'm like. This guy lived maybe the most unique like time and life in comedy. You know what I mean? It was like so fun. It was the change too. The, it, it was the changing of the guard, starting a podcast. You create one of the first podcasts. That's to the other ever thing about it. you have to know what the time was like. I have to explain to you. There were no podcasts. So this idea, like, how's this podcast gonna be big? It's like, oh, we just work on to shoot the shit and have a couple hundred listeners. Yeah. There was no there wasn't even a thought that ads would come. You know? Maybe you can get the word about an in town LA show. Maybe you'll have ten people show up for that. But like, it's really just to do it for like to do something creative. There wasn't, there was no. It's so corporate now. I don't even put judgment on it. I'll learn from Dolly. Just, but it's just a different thing now. So it's, it's great now. You can make a lot of money. You can pay your rent. It wasn't that then. It was just for fun. Were you drawn to the punk nature of it at the time? It was just also like we didn't want to do morning radio. Yeah. It was like we saw how dumb morning radio was. You, you curse. They all go, "Wow, come on!" Like, shoot, sorry, sorry, sorry. They have to do a drop, and this is the dumbest questions. And this was like you could talk to about your friends to like dark shit. You could say shit. It was like wow on a mic. Everyone was helpful to each other. Marin brought me over. Like let me show you the fucking shit to to to, to buy. You know, Rogan gave me old microphones. We were all just like helping each other. Red Band forced me to get started. It was just like it, it, no one infringed on anybody else. It was just so fun. But it wasn't. It was still about stand up. That it was just a bonus thing. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, it was a conduit for more stand up to get people out. Just a thing no, to do. No, just to do a thing to do. Where it was like, wouldn't it be f morning radio was fun in moments. ONA was fun on its own. 
In fact, I remember flying with Rogan. We were in Philadelphia. He goes, let's stop in uh, New York. We'll fly there. We'll do o and in the morning, then we'll drive to Philadelphia. And it wasn't going to help with the shows. It was just like, let's do it. It was a fun show to do. That was an outlier. Um, Preston and Steve, you know. Uh, um, um, I've heard Calta was good. Calta, which I never did. I, we just didn't do tour stops in Tampa. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do it now. Yeah. And it's like, why are you here? Sold out. I'm like, you're fucking, you're one of the good shows. This is fun. You know? Um, so it was like, why can't we just have fun? Why can't we just do it? Uh, even if you're not promoting anything specifically, this is a fun one. To, that's what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. If there's an open mic, you know, or it's a decent show, and somebody's like, you're, you're having dinner with your wife, and somebody's like, hey, there's a show going on in the basement. Do you want to do a spot? You're like, how many people are down there? Like 15? You're like, yeah, I'll do a spot. Around. It's like, you're not doing for money. Yeah. It's just like, this will be fun. This is my fulfillment, you know? Mm -hmm. That's what it was. It was just fulfilling. It's so fucking cool. I know there's, there's going to be a thing of like your generation of comedy, like looking back at that time. But my generation looked back at another time. It's all night, night. What is it? Midnight in Paris. Yeah. Like, what's the best time to be alive? And it's now. It's always now. It's just going to seem cooler then. Uh, Meet Me in the Bathroom, that book about the, the aughts um, music scene in New York, was LC Sound System and the Yeah, Yeah, Yeahs and the Hives and. And it's like, whoa, were you guys doing this? Fuck? And it's like, they were still starving, but they were looking back on the Chelsea Hotel and fucking Patti Smith, where she was a waitress and she was still trying to do this innovative, cool art, this music and like going out with Pollock and like all the, it's like, what? And it's like, what a cool time. It's like, now, but then the 90s was cool and the 2000s was cool. My time starting comedy was cool. Now was very cool also. But it just seems so different though. It like, was so much more outlaw. It yeah, was so right? much cooler than like, it is now. <laughs> even, I don't know. It was so much cooler. <laughs> I listened to obviously episodes of Skeptic Tank like throughout my life coming up, but I didn't realize the types of episodes you were doing until recently, like going through the catalog. Oh, right. Where it's like, like what? Just having a prostitute on. Oh, yeah. Getting, no, no one had done that. Yeah. Like, what do you mean? You interviewed a prostitute? It was like, oh, yeah, we could. It wasn't going to go anywhere. Yeah, that was a fun one. And that to me feels like the punk rock angle where it's like, it's kind of, maybe you shouldn't do this. Maybe you shouldn't right. have this person. Now the algorithm would like de, de like level up your whole account. Yeah. Like, mm, like, that's a, whatever. And it's like, oh, you're thinking about other shit. I'm thinking about something I just wanted to do. Holocaust survivors and like yeah, and multiple ones. It's like, yeah, we could do it. You could just like have these interesting interviews. Only like Charlie Rose was doing at the time. Mm -hmm. Interesting characters in a real interview. And is that what kept you in it? Like you do the show for 12 years. The first couple of years is like, okay, this is just a fun thing to do. But then after a while, it starts to make some money. People are listening to it. What keeps you in for the next like eight? <sighs> Wasn't money. I never did great with ads because I wouldn't, <laughs> yeah. one, I wouldn't do ads of stuff I believed against. You would pee in Schweppes bottles and then just do some of that too. <laughs> and I was like, I want to do my own ad reads. I want to do like my, I say it the way I say it. And they're like, mm, we want you saying it the way we say it. I'm like, nah, I want to say it my own way. And they're like, well, then we don't have to work together. Yeah. So I'd lose some ads over that too. Even the ones like, do whatever. And like, oh, no, you found our line. No. The, the Blue Chew one is the great. Blue Chew is great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about fucking your dog because the only way you can connect with them is you're not hard by them, but you need to connect. So Blue Chew will get you hard. Just they're like, no. I'm like, oh, no one's, oh, whatever. But, um, yeah, and that kind of shit. Like, we have prostitutes. So I'm like, I don't want to be influenced by that. And then also, like, I won't do gambling ads. I, I think the product is the person. Hmm. I'm like, I don't want to, like, you know, I kind of honor my my fan base. So I don't want to, like, put them into this. I'm not against gambling, but I don't. Like I say, like, if, if it's Coca-Cola, it's like, sweet. I'll give you a dollar. You give me a Coca-Cola. It's an even exchange. The price, what it is. If they price it at $7, they won't sell me. If they price it at $0.10, cents, they'll sell hella, you know. But with gambling, it's like they're making money off your losses. That's yeah. their only way. You're losing money is the way they make money. So I'm not going to help promote that to my to my fans. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, or McDonald's. I'm like, this is death. I know 100%. And I have eaten it, but I'm not going to tell my fans to eat death. Yeah. You know, they didn't come calling, but gambling <laughs> sites did. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I think Fitzsimmons also won't do gambling. There's a few people who are just like, it's a little, you just don't notice the integrity because it's like you don't see the gambling ads. She's like, oh, I guess it never came at you. It was like, no, they do. Mm. Um, but so is some money, but the draw was the real thing. I could have people come to my shows. Mm. I remember doing a Minneapolis, and I had an audience member show up from Pete Holmes' podcast. We were about on the same level at one point. He goes, I heard your interview on Pete Holmes, and I came out, and I would call Pete, and I was like, dude, our conversation got a two people to buy tickets to my show in Minneapolis. Our conversation in L.A., it might have been Edmonton, the same, same owners of the same clubs. But, like, now let me try to look at it. It might have been Edmonton. It doesn't matter. 
sorry, don't get caught up in dumb fucking details. The point <laughs> is, in some far off city, people are showing up because of these things. So it was like, oh, cool. Was that the moment you realized, like, oh, there's a wave happening? Like, there's a shift. People are really listening, and it's actually driving people out no, of houses. It was, well, yeah, a little bit then. It was like, oh, this is like a real thing. We listen. It started with just truckers. Truckers mm. was their main listening fan base. It was just like, instead of CBs to, like, talk to each other, they'd be like, these guys are telling stories, and it's just on. And you could, you don't have to, like, worry about leaving, leaving a radio signal, you know? It was just on, and they would write us on Twitter. And truckers really drove it. Yeah, no um, pun intended. I really yeah. like the idea that you were doing shit intentionally in weird places oh, like looking fun, back yeah. at the early episodes it's like hey we're on an airplane yeah and it's like all right i guess they're on an airplane like yeah you could hear the just like in comfort yeah. plus just like talking yeah so crazy yeah people get annoyed me and rogan did one of playing people like looking around but it was like yeah it was rude but <laughs> but also how rude is it like you're how just rude. talking but right? we, you talk louder when you're talking on a mic if you're yeah. talking if you and i are talking on a plane it'd be like, yeah, yeah, like this yeah, yeah, you know yeah we should just move the mics closer and put them up <laughs> but we just didn't have that thought it's like when you're on your phone, someone's like, shut the fuck up. You're like, oh, yeah. I'm I, I do it with my AirPods all the yeah. time. My wife will just be like, don't do yeah. that. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, you're completely right. But that's just such a fascinating thing. I don't know, that time to me is like really it romantic. It was so punk. It was so do anything anywhere. Like, even like you doing early the Rogan. The money wasn't involved. Yeah. yeah. Doing early Rogan, it was like a laptop. We open up a laptop and it was this, the, 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 whatever. Sorry, Lauren Cobra. Webcam. The my, webcam. And we'd have to crouch in to get in the shot. We had to crouch in, so there's one person sitting on, this, on the on a couch, two people sitting below, so you get a three person like circle that tightened in. It's like me, Hefron, and Rogan. We're like, come on over. We go to his fucking you know beautiful house that would now be his fucking slave quarters, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, and then barbecue. But do you realize it in retrospect? Like, I feel like this yeah, is now the... looking back. I'm doing it right now. I'm like, wow, cool. It so, like this thing that was on a webcam in a green room is now the biggest show in the world. Like, yeah. In, well, like, I mean, think about it. Think about like uh, um, uh, Grateful Dead, where like, hey, we're just a fucking garage band. We're playing for some people that are fucked up on mushrooms and acid. We should all take some mushrooms and acid. Let's play for like seven hours. So these guys can have a full trip. And you're like, you're going to tour the world 80 times over. They're like, nah, dude, we're just trying to play in the garage for these guys fucked up. You know? It's crazy. Like yeah. when people are like, oh, yeah, like here's a picture of the Beatles playing at like a school dance in the 60s. You're yeah. like, what? What? And it's like talking to the guy that like booked them. And it's like, oh yeah, I was a part of this thing. I was a part of the wave. Like yeah. their opening act, whatever. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I used to go to UFC weigh-ins when anyone could walk in. They weren't full. There was like twenty people, just the fight camps themselves and the tap out guys. Everyone would know each other. They didn't have to be backstage because there was no one there. There was like thirty five people there, and all in the fight camps. There was no fans. So I'm. Mean, we almost did this once where Rogan was like, I was gonna call you up to get weighed in. I was like, Yeah, I should have been fun. I was like, so I should funny. make it. I'm like, I don't weigh this much. It's off. <laughs> and just have fun. And we could have. And no one would have cared. No, Dana wouldn't have cared. Nobody would have cared. Yeah. It, it would have been like, yeah, I don't know. People yeah, were barely watching the fights. No one's watching the weigh-in. Yeah, and then it became like you had to buy tickets to the weigh-in. We're like, that's so much different. We saw the UFC go from this side thing, still cool, but not not this industry. I remember Dana saying once, he's like, I want to make it bigger than the NFL. I'm like, right. that's crazy, dude. Good luck. But thinking no, and then it way past the NFL. Yeah. That same thing with podcasting. It's like, wow. So I saw this once in terms of like, having this moment of like if you could see what it could become one of the most heartwarming i got to be friends with the fighters they come out to shows we do weigh-in shows on friday night uh, we didn't have anything to do there's no fights that rogan had to work he got a companion ticket uh as part of his contract so i was like rogan book a fucking midnight show for us at a club so we do that you know they'd have two shows an eight and a ten and like there's nothing on midnight on Wait, 250 seats yeah let's do some stand-up i don't have the power to make the call you do